This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Baruch Hashem, welcome back, everyone. Well, actually, welcome back to myself, um, Parshas Balak. It's very interesting, Parshas Balak. We always lay in in uh, the Shabbos before the three weeks, <coughs> so there must be a connection then between Parshas Balak and the Yemei Hamitzarim. It's interesting. The Haftarah of Parshas Balak begins. Vahayisa, Seiris Yisrael, Ketal Meis Hashem, Kervivim Alei Esav. So I always thought Esav is Shiva Asar Betamos, which is the Haftarah that we lay in immediately prior to Shiva Asar Betamos. In fact, that Rizal does say that in Tehillim, when it says Esav, it refers to Shiva Asar Betamos. In fact, that Rizal says there's a pasuk, Vayamiru es Kavaydam. Betavnes Shar Oichel Esav, that Klal exchanged their glory in the image of an ox that eats grass. That Rizal says it's not just telling you the menu of the ox; it's telling you the day that they served the egel, which was Esav Shiva Asar Betamas. Okay. In any event, though that explains the Haftoira, what does Parshas Balak have to do with Shiva Asar Betamas and the Yemei Hamatzarim and the three weeks? At the end of the parsha, Bilam has this ingenious plan, how he's going to get Klai Yisrael to stumble. What's the plan? He's going to have the B'nai Smoyav go out and be loose, be licentious, be promiscuous with uh, Klai Yisrael. This is the big goyness of Bilam. He says, I know the God of these people, he hates the Nus. Why was this Davka the Eitza of Bilam? I mean, if Bilam wanted Klai Yisrael to stumble... There are a lot of things he could have got us to do. First of all, to be mezana with a guy. Okay, it's a terrible thing, but it's, you know, in, this, in the hierarchy of lavin, it's really not uh, the most chamor. It's only a lav. It's not a, there's no chiv misa. It's more chamor to, to live with a, a, a woman who's Jewish, who's a nida. That's chiv kares. I mean, why didn't he say, Bilam, uh, uh, Balak, I have a great idea. Let's bring Jews into shul and get them to talk by Chazar Sashatz. I mean, there are a lot of bad things that, that a Jew could do. Why Davka? What? Well, actually, according to Shulchan Aruch, it says, Gadol Avoynoi Minasoi, which is worse than even uh, being Boil Aramis. You know, it doesn't say by Boil Aramis, Gadol Avoynoi Minasoi. Gadol Avoynoi Minasoi. Yeah, by talking and by davening. Shulchan Aruch, the Shulch, Maran Bet Yosef, says that Hasach Sichas Chulen Bisha Shachazen Choyzer Atfila Godol Avoyna Minasoy. It only says that two places, talking by Chazar Sashatz and killing. This is not the topic of today's shir, but but it happens to be. I mean, there there. It was one of my pet peeves, but um, there are a lot of things Bilam could have got us to do. Why did he dafka pick this? Okay, so let's examine some of the words in the first couple of Sukkim in the parsha. So Vayar Balak Ben Tzibar Yisko Asher also Yisol LaAmoiri. Balak sees everything that Klal Yisol did to the Amoiri. Vayagar Mayav. What does it mean, Vayagar Mayav? He was afraid. Since when does the Torah use the word Vayagar? It should say Vayivchad Mayav, Vayecherad Mayav. Where else does it use the word Vayagar? I don't even remember. Vayagar is a very unusual expression. If it wanted to say that Mayav was afraid, it could say, Pachad, Charada, what's Vayagar? And then it says he was afraid, Mipnei Ha'am, because of the nation. And then it says, Vayagat, Mipnei B'nei Yisrael. So make up your mind, was he afraid because of the Am, or was he afraid because of the B'nei Yisrael? Why does it switch from Ha'am to B'nei Yisrael? It should say, Vayagar, Mipnei B'nei Yisrael, Vayagat, Mipnei B'nei Yisrael, or Vayagar, Mipnei Ha'am, why does it switch? Fine. And then all of a sudden, Mayav gets all poetic on us. Now these people, they're going to lick us up. All of our surroundings, like an ox, licks up the vegetation of the field. Why all of a sudden... Does Balak get all uh, poetic? 
he uses this metaphor, the allegory, they're going to lick us up the way an ox licks up vegetation. Just say they're going to come and they're going to kill us, they're going to destroy us. Why the poetry? What is he adding? Okay. So who do they send to? They send a message to Bilam. Vayishlach malachim el Bilam ben Be'or. Where does Bilam live? Pisaira. Pisaira. To Pisar. Do I really need to know where Bilam lived? It says Vayishlach malachim el Bilam ben Be'or. Finished. Wherever he lives. Does it add any information by saying Pisaira? Like, we have no idea where Pisaira is. It's not even identifying to us where Bilam lives. We're to Pesar. Well, where's Pesar? I don't know. And we're... By the way, does it ever say the word Pesarah in Tanakh? No. So we don't even know where it is. So why say it? It's not even an identifying mark. By the way, I'm going to give you a little hint. There is one place where Pesarah appears in Kala Kula, And it's not in the Pasuk. It's in a Targum. Where is that? In Parshas Truma, the Asisa Shulchan Atze Shittim, you'll make the table out of Shittim wood, Amasayim Arkai, two Amais long, the Ama Rachbai, and an Ama wide, the Ama Vachetzi Kaimasa, and an Ama and a half tall. The Tsipisa Oisai Zahav Tahar, you'll cover it with pure gold, the Asisa Loi Zer Zahav Saviv, and you'll make for it a golden crown um, around it. Says Targum Unklus, how do you translate Shulchan in Aramaic? Vesabed Pasaira, make a table. Interesting. Is there any connection between the location of Bilam living in Pasaira and the Targum Unklus? You wouldn't have thought. They're not even in the same language. And Pasaira in the Chumash is a hey. Pasaira in the Targum is an Aleph. But obviously there has to be some kind of connection. Otherwise... I wouldn't be bringing it in. <laughs> so, so uh, Rashi, Rashi points out that the Kalim, there were three Kalim in the Beis Hamikdash in the Mishkan that had a Kesar, that had a Zer around it. The Zer around the Arain represented Kesar Taira. The Zer around the Mizbeach was the Kesar of Kahuna. And the Zer around the Shulchan, Rashi says, Simen lekesar malchus. The crown around the Shulchan represented the crown of royalty. Sheha Shulchan, table, shame oishar ugadula. Denotes, connotes wealth and greatness. Kamay Sha'imrim, Shulchan Melachim. So is there a connection then between Bil- B- Bilam's location of Pesaira and the concept of table, the concept of royalty? Maybe. Let's think a little bit about Bilam's plot over here and where Bilam is, how Bilam begins on his mission of attacking and trying to curse Klal Yisrael. So the Psukim tell us that Bilam made three attempts, that Bilam made three attempts to uh, attack and to curse. He's riding on his donkey. And the first time the Pasuk says, Vayosef Malach Hashem Avar, Vayamoid B'makam Tsar, Asher Ein Derech Lintois Yamin Usmael, the first time there is no room to go, not to the right and not to the left. And then, Vatera Osen Es Malach Hashem, the donkey saw the angel and he crouched under Bilam and Bilam got angry and he hit the donkey with the stick. And Hashem opened up the mouth of the donkey. And he says to Bilam, What did I do to you? That you hit me these three times. So if you look in the Psukim, the Psukim imply that the first time Bilam attempted to attack, he could have gone first either to the right side or to the left side. He had two options to go. The second time, he only had one option option to go, one path to go. And the third time, there was no room to go, not to the right, and not to the left. So Rashi points out, Why did Bilam stop in these three places? Simone Avais Haruhu. Rebbe showed him a sign of the Avais. How did he show him a sign of the Avais? The first time he had a chance to move to the right and to the left, that represents Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu had 
a tzaddik by the name of Yitzchak, but he also had two paths of descendants which were unworthy, Yishmael and the Bnei Keturah. Memela, as Bilam is trying to cut us off and attack the roots of the Jewish people, when he was looking at Avraham, he had two opportunities to attack. One on the right side, Yishmael, one on the left side, the Bnei Keturah. And then when he comes on his second stop and he wants to attack the source of Yitzchak, he has only one opportunity to attack, and that is Esav. And then the third time, Ein derech lintais yamin usmal, there is no room to turn out to the right, not to the left. That represents Yaakov Avinu, that Yaakov Avinu v'hoysam itasai shleimo, all of his children were Sadikim, Yureim, Ushleimim, and he had no room to turn. Okay. So what do we see from here, Rabbi Isai? That Bilam has a beef, excuse the expression, with the Avais. He's trying to get us at our root. He's trying to attack the Avais. In fact, the Arizal says, now it's not so easy to find uh, the Arizal in this neighborhood. Even in the yeshiva, they don't have the Kisvei Ari. There happens to be one shul in the neighborhood, this shul, that has the Kisvei Ari. Nobody knows where it is. Behind that door, <laughs> there's this bookcase, secret bookcase. Seriously. And they have the Kisvei Ari. So many years ago, when I located, I, was, I had permission to borrow. So the Arizal says like this. Vayosem Hashem davar b'fi Bilam, Hashem put word in the mouth of Bilam. Vayoymer shuv el Balak, says the Arizal, the Rashi Tevois of the word. Vayosem Hashem davar b'fi Bilam, Vayoymer shuv el Balak v'choy sedaber. El Balak v'choy sedaber. Spell out the word Avois. Bilam kavanosay haya lakar his lavshes gimel Avois. Bilam wanted to uproot the three Avois. How? The Avais did their thing already, their legacy was intact, and they're no longer alive even. How is Bilam going to uproot the three Avais? In what way? They were not contemporaries. What does it mean Bilam wanted to be Oikar the three Avais? By the way, Rabbi say, look back at number six. Rashi says, Zashalosh Regalim. So let's talk about the donkey. The donkey gave a drasha to Bilam, and the ba- donkey said, a beautiful drasha. Mel Sisi Lacha, what I ever do to you? Kihiki Sani Zeshalosh Regalim, that you hit me these three times. So Rashi seems to be bothered. Why did the donkey say Shalosh Regalim? should say Shalosh Pe'amim. Says Rashi, Remez Loi, Ramaz Loi, Sha'ata Ata Mavakesh Lakar Uma, you want to uproot a nation? Hachoy Geges Shalosh Regalim Bashana. What are you doing? You want to uproot these people? Don't you know they keep Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkis? Don't mess with them. Can't touch him. So the words Shalash Regalim refer to the Shalash Regalim. A few questions over here. Bilam's coming to uproot Kal Yisrael. Kal Yisrael has how many mitzvahs? A lot. 630 mitzvahs. Why is the donkey saying, Why are you messing with Kal Yisrael? Don't you know they keep Shabbos? Don't you know they wear tefillin? Don't you know they come to Agar the Pirka? There are a lot of things that, uh, that the donkey could have told Bilam. Why is the donkey saying, you're going to uproot Kali so They keep Shalosh Regalim. Why of all the 613 mitzvahs does the donkey specify the Shalosh Regalim? By the way, there's a gra on this, but we're not going to use the gra. The gra says that uh, what the donkey was saying is that um, how can you destroy Kali So who's going to keep the Torah? So Bilam said, I'll keep the Taira. So the donkey said, you can't keep the Taira. You're a chigar, you're a cripple. So Bilam said, so what? A cripple could be Mekayim all the mitzvahs. No, but not uh, Ali al-Regel. A uh, chigar is pater from Ali al-Regel. So the donkey says, how could you be a prukai? So they keep the Shalash Regalim. You cannot keep the Shalash Regalim. Also, he was blind, right? The Shalash Regalim, you have to be, you have to be able to see. But we're going to explain it a different way. Why is the donkey... Uh, focusing that Bilam was trying to be Oikar, the Shalash Regalim. Also another Indian. Why are the three Regalim called Regalim? What does the word Regal mean? Foot. There's a question. You know, when you think about the beauty of a Yom Tif, I'm not sure that feet are the first thing that comes to mind. You think about feet? Why? Because you walk on Yom Tif. You walk to Shalayim. You could drive to Shalayim also. They also used to breathe when they walked up. They, we don't call it the three breathing. You know, they did a lot of things. 
they, you know, they walked. That's true. So that's the, that's the, that, you know, sums up, that captures the essence of the Yom Tif. Sholosh Rugalim. Why are they called Sholosh Rugalim? Okay, now another question. Yeah, I lost count already, but we'll, we'll try to answer all of them. Yeah, we're down, yeah, we have only two hours left, all right. Okay, so... Rashi says that the donkey said to Bilam, Bilam, you want to be Oikar, the Shalash Regalim. Didn't Arizal just say that Bilam, his Kavano was Laakar, the Shalash Avais? So what did Bilam want to do? Did he want to be Oikar, the, the three Avais? Or did he want to be Oikar, the three Regalim? So to that you can answer very simply that it's the same thing. There's a famous Torah in Simon Tafi Zion. The Torah writes, the Torah, Rabbeinu Yaakov ben Rabbeinu Asher, writes, he heard from his brother, Rabbeinu Yehuda, that the three regalim are keneged, the three avais. Pesach is keneged Avraham, because Avraham, uh, the Malachim came to Avraham on Pesach, and Avraham served them, Matzah, Lushi, Vasi Ugais. Shavuos is keneged Yitzchak, because the shoifer of, of uh, Kavos HaToyro was from the Isle of Yitzchak. And Sukkis is Keneged Yaakov Avinu, Shenemar, Ula Meknehu, Asa, Sukkis. So it's not a stira. Did, did Bilam want to be Oikar the Shalash Avish, or did Bilam want to be Oikar the Shalash Regalim? It's the same thing. The Shalash Regalim represent Avraham Yitzchak and Yaakov. In fact, there's an amazing Sefer. The name of the Sefer is Ohalei Shem, by Rav Shem Klingberg, Hashem Yimkoim Damai, who was murdered at Kedosh Hashem, Bishnas Hazam. He writes that Bilam said, excuse me, the Pasuk says, Shalosh regalim tachoig li bashana. It says the word tachoig by the three regalim. And that's a remez to Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Because what was Avraham's midah? Chesed. What was Yitzchak's midah? Gevura. What was Yaakov's midah? Tiferes. Tachoig stands for Tiferes, Chesed, Gevura, indicating that the Shalosh Rugalim correspond to the Shalosh Avais. By the way, I just want to point out that Rizal himself says this. That Rizal number 10 on the Sharap Sukkim, Chazal Amru, Shabike Shlaker, Shalosh Rugalim Yisrael. Where do we see Bilam wanted to be Oikar, the Shalosh Regalim? The answer is the Shalosh Regalim are the Shalosh Avais. So by being Oikar, the Shalosh Avais, he in effect is being Oikar, the Shalosh Regalim. Could somebody tell me how Bilam planned on being Oikar, the Shalosh Avais? There was an Avraham, he did his thing. There was a Yitzchak. There was a Yaakov, they had their tzidkos, they did their mitzvahs, there's chusas intact. How in the world is Bilam going to be Oikar the Shalosh Avais and thereby being Oikar the Shalosh Regalim? Marav Raboisai, Bilam is a very powerful guy. He was successful at least in trying to curse Kal Yisrael, but Chazal tell us that the one thing that was a thorn in his side more than anything else the one thing that at this time, the time that he tried to curse Kal Yisrael, when he saw this, it completely stopped his ability to curse us, is what? Matoivu Oihalecha Yaakov. Rashi brings down that Bilam lifted up his eyes to curse Kal Yisrael. When he saw Kal Yisrael, Shoichin Lashvatav, Rashi says he saw that they lived separately and their doorways were not aligned so that one cannot look into the tent of the other. Rashi says, "Vatehi alav ruach elokim, Allah beliboy shaloi yekalalam." The tsnius, the modesty of Klal Yisrael, was such a thorn in the side of Bilam that he was so inspired he changed from wanting to curse us to being mavarechas. Why was the matoyboy alecha Yaakov such a bracha, such a thorn in the side of Bilam? This is the central question on the parsha. Balak presumably was not a fool. He knows Klal Yisrael came out of Mitzrayim. Let's go back to the first pesukim. It says, "Vayishlach Malachim El Bilam, Lamar, Hine Am Yatsam Mitzrayim." This nation that came out of Egypt. No kidding, they came out of Egypt. What? What? Bilam didn't know that. 
Everybody, good morning, America, right? Shamu Amim Yirgazan, Chil Achaz Yoshe Pashas. Everybody knew Klai Yisrael came out of Mitzrayim. What's this big message that Balak is sending to Bilam? They just left Mitzrayim. Of course they did. If anybody would know that we left Mitzrayim, it would be Bilam. Bilam was in Mitzrayim. Bilam was the one who gave the eight to the Parai in the first place of Hava Neschak Malai. Why did Balak think that he would be successful in attacking and cursing Klai Yisrael? He sees the miracles that Rav Hashem is performing for us. He sees the most powerful nation in the world, Mitzrayim, is decimated as we're leaving. Did, Bil- did Balak really think that he would be successful in hiring Bilam to attack and to curse Chal Yisrael? So the Arizal says a phenomenal thing. The Arizal says a phenomenal thing. The Arizal says, let's go back to Parshas Koirach. In Parshas Koirach, you could ask the same question. Did Koirach really think that he would overcome Moshe Rabbeinu? He knew that Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Har Sinai to Mechabal the Torah. He knew that the Rebbe told Moshe to appoint Aaron. What was Koirach thinking? So we know the Chazal tell us Koirach was a Pikeach. But he saw Baruch HaKodesh that who was going to come out of him? Sure. Shmuel. And he knew Shmuel was Shakal Kenegin Moshe Rabbeinu. So he figured, if Shmuel is going to come out of me, if I go, there will never be a Shmuel. It's a Raya Barura that I'm right. It doesn't matter, it seems uh, unlikely, it seems like the, the odds are stacked in the favor of Moshe Rabbeinu. I see, Shmuel's coming out of me, if Shmuel's coming out of me, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the last man standing. Otherwise, what, what did Kairach think? He gets into the, the rink with Moshe Rabbeinu. He thought he was going to survive the, the match. The answer is, he saw Baruch HaKodesh, who's going to come out of him. And he says, I don't know. I don't know why. I'm not sure why. But those are the facts. The facts are, I'm going to have a Shmuel. Says the Arizal Adavar Nifla. Balak also saw, with his necromancy, with his kishof, somebody's coming out of him. Who's coming out of him? David HaMelech. Rus HaMoyavia. How in the world is David and Rus going to come out of him unless he has something go, going for him? He saw Malchus was coming out of him. Of Balak. Chazal say, as the, the, the Gemara says, then the schar that Balak made 42 Mizbechais, he was zoicha to have Malchus based David come out of him. In fact, the Gemara says, "Lo Olam Yasek Adam Matar Mitzvah Shaloi Lishma Shemitach Shaloi Lishma Bal Lishma." Where do we learn that if you do a Mitzvah Shaloi Lishma Bal Lishma, because Balak brought Karbana Shaloi Lishma, and from him came out David Amalek. David came from Balak. David came from Moav. David came from Rus, who came from Eglon, who came from Balak. Mamela, Balak has a Shaila about what royalty. How do you say royalty in Chumash? Shulchan. What's the Targum of Shulchan? Pesaira. So who knows in Yone Malchus? Who knows Pesaira? He sent a message to Bilam, Pesaira, to understand, to comprehend. Can he overcome Klal Yisrael if Malchus based David is coming out of him? That's the secret of the Arizal. That's the meaning of Ayishach Malachim Pesoira. He sent the Pesar, meaning he had a question about Malchus. Pesoira is the Targum of Shulchan. That's why he sent the message Pesoira. We have an hour and 45 minutes left. So let's see. So the Gemara says, now let's, let's get the following introduction. We have to understand um, the following metaphysical concept. And that is, the same way a body has a neshama, and what would the body look like without a neshama? Without a neshama, the body couldn't function. The body would be a shell. The body would be a lifeless goylem, would be a lifeless entity. Even though the neshama is not tangible, it's not physical, you can't put your finger on it, but it's the soul that gives vitality to the guf. By the same token... There's a concept that the Arizal talks about, and the Chassam Soifer speaks about many times, and the Hafla speaks about, and it's a, a very important concept in Machshava. Every object, an, um, 
animated object, inanimate object, everything has what is called a nitzutz shel kedusha, a spark of kedusha, which is the life force of the object. Even a table, if a table has a nitzutz shel kedusha, and if that nitzutz shel kedusha would be removed, the table would not exist anymore. It would disintegrate. It would disappear. Every rock, every house, every rasha, everything in this world has a life force. If that life force is removed, the item, the entity disintegrates. A tzaddik is able to collect, so to speak, the nitzotzot shel kedusha wherever the tzaddik goes. In fact, just give you a little illustration of this. The Rav Gedal Yashur, number 19, based on the Archaim HaKadosh writes, what's the concept of golos? Why do Jews have to go to Spain, to Portugal, to Italy, to Morocco, to Poland, to Germany, to England, to Russia, to Eretz Yisrael, to, to America? What, what, what do we have in these places? The answer is there's a concept that because of the Avoynes of Klal Yisrael, the sparks of Kedusha get scattered all over the world, and the Avoida of Golos is to gather in these sparks. Now, if we would be on the highest level, the Archaim HaKadosh writes, if we would be doing our alimod and our avoida on the highest level, we'd be able to attract the sparks to us like what is called an evan hashoyevus, like a magnet. But because we're not on that madrega, we need to physically go out and collect these sparks. That is why it is a historical um, phenomenon that the Jews could be in a country for 100 years, for 200 years, for 300 years, we could reach the highest echelons of society, and in a split second, they kick us out, and we never return. Here, we're in Spain for hundreds of years. All of a sudden, one, one day, they wake up, Jews out, we never go back. We could be in a country, and we could reach the highest levels of government, economic, societal influence, and all of a sudden, we're out of there, and we never go back. Why? Because the purpose of being in Golas is to gather up these sparks of Kedusha. Once we've completed the task, we have no business there anymore, and we have no reason to be there. In fact, the Chsam Soifer, in many, many, many pieces, explains that the purpose of being in Mitzrayim was to gather up all the various sparks of Kedusha that fell into Mitzrayim, from the Chet of Adam Arishon, from the Chet of the Dar HaFlaga, the Dar HaMabal, and the Anshe Sadoim. But when we left Mitzrayim, it was Vayinatzlu Es Mitzrayim. We emptied out Mitzrayim, Rashi says, Kedogim B'Mitzula. We emptied out Mitzrayim, we removed every last spark of Kedusha. Therefore, the Torah says, never go back to Mitzrayim. Why? There's nothing to do there. It's, it's, there. Mitzrayim has absolutely no value to the Jew. Mitzrayim is not a country anymore. It's not the Egypt of old. It's not ancient Egypt. Every last mark of Kedusha has been removed and there is no, we have no business in Mitzrayim. In fact, Rabbi Isai, even a Russia has in him a spark of Kedusha. Now, normally a person cannot look at a Russia. Why? What are you looking at? There's nothing of value. There's nothing redeemable in the Russia. But there's a concept that a tzaddik, if a tzaddik is able to look at a rasha, extract out the one spark of kedusha in the rasha, and by doing that, you know, you find throughout Shas, Rav Sheshes gave someone a bad look. What happened to them? Nasa gal shalatzamis. They became a, a, a pile of bones. What's the pshat? Look at number fifteen. Ikeda Amri, Rav Sheshes, Nasan Enavoy. Rav Sheshes put his eyes on him, Venasa Gal Shalatomis, and became a pile of bones. What, what's the procedure over here? What's this method? The answer is, Rav Sheshes was able to look at the person by looking at Rav Sheshes' Kedusha level was so high that it, it, um, it extracted the spark of Kedusha on the Rasha. Mamela, the person has no vitality, his Neshama has been removed. Okay. It's not, you know, don't try this at home. You, know, you don't need eyesight to be able to do this. Here's what happened. When Kla Yisrael left Mitzrayim, they removed every last nitzutz of Kedusha. The thing was, as, time was, as the shot clock was, uh, the game was coming to an end, they had a lot of work to do. They had to remove a lot, a lot of sparks. 
but they didn't have time to go over to each person and say, oh, this guy, okay, I'm going to remember this part. This guy, you remember that part. So basically when it came down to it, at the end, in the last days of being a Mitzrayim, there was a group of people that had mixed into them sparks of Kedusha, Tuma and Tara, Toi You know what they were called? The Erev Rav. You see, had we been in Mitzrayim a little bit longer, we would have been able just to extract the sparks of Kedusha and leave the riffraff behind. But we didn't have time to do that. So you know what Moshe Rabbeinu did in the last days? He gathered all the people that have mixed into them some sparks of Kedusha, and Moshe Rabbeinu said, I'll deal with extracting it later. In the meantime, let me just gather out whatever is Shaykh to be removed from, and then I'll remove it later. I'll give you a Moshe. I remember uh, um, many years ago in the neighborhood, I was once learning in a shul. Can't give away too many details. And it was right before Sukkot. And the rub of the shul had on the table in the shul a pile of hadasim, mamish up to the ceiling. Maybe like 2,000 hadasim. I never saw so many hadasim. So when the rub came in the shul, I said, oh, you know, why does the rub, the rub selling hadasim? He said, no, they're all mine. I said, you know, in shul dekmir, but you only need two hadasim. See, somewhere in this pile, there'll be two hadasim. So he bought thousands of hadasim hoping that he would be zoicha to find two good hadasim in the pile. It's a ma'isa shahaya. It's the same thing. Moshe Rabbeinu, at the end of the stay of Klai Mitzrayim, there were a, c- a couple good sparks left, but he didn't have the time to extract them. So he just removed an Erev Rav, a mixture, and he said, I'll remove the good sparks later. As Klai Yisrael is approaching Mayav, let me just explain what's going on over here. Moyav Rabbi Sai, what is the life force of Moyav? What is the Nitzot Shel Kedusha of Moyav? What is the vitality of Moyav? What keeps Moyav alive? What is its source of Kedusha? From what is it Yoinik vitality? The Nitzot Shel Kedusha of Moyav is. David HaMelech. There was, the Nitzot Shel Kedusha of Moyav is David HaMelech. The only reason Moyav has existence and can exist because David HaMelech is in there. That's where it's Yoinik from. And as Klal Yisrael is approaching Mayav, why do you think Klal Yisrael is approaching Mayav? What business do they have with Mayav? They're coming to extract David HaMelech. And as soon as David is extracted, Mayav will cease to exist. As in fact, if you look in Sefer Shmuel, the day that David became king, the second thing he did was he destroyed Mayav forever and ever and ever and ever. Why? Because they can't exist anymore. The Nitzvot Shel Kedusho has been removed from David. There's an amazing, from, from Mayav, thank you. There's an incredible Medrash and a Gemara. Look at number 22, 23, 24. The Gemara in Baba Kama says, Al Tatsar Es Mayav, don't distress Mayav, Yal Tiskar Ba Milchama. Don't distress Mayav, don't attack Mayav. So the Shiloh is, what did Moshe think? Why would Moshe conduct the war without permission? Why does Hashem have to tell David? Why does Hashem have to tell Moshe, don't attack Moav? Why would Moshe attack Moav without permission? The answer is Moshe would have made a Kabbalah Chaymer. Midian only was hired by Moav. And Midian, we have a mitzvah, Tzuraras HaMidyanim. So Moav, Atzmom, Loi, Kol Shekein. So Moshe would have made a Kabbalah Chaymer. If I have to destroy Midian, of course I have to destroy Moav. So Hashem said, no. Your mind is not my mind. There's still two good sparks in Amon Yamayav, Rus and Nama. Therefore, even though you should destroy Mayav, hold your horses. In fact, why do I use that expression? Hashem's telling him, don't attack, but not forever. Because if you look in the Medrash, look at number 23. So the Medrash Yilam Adenu asks, what's Nikaim Nikmas? Nikaim is for Midyan. Nikmas is for Mayav. When would we take revenge against Mayav? Be made David. In fact, the Medrash, why be made David? Mayav was the one who started with us. Why is Midyan different than Mayav? The answer is, David asid lot says mayen. So Hashem said, you got to wait until David is removed from Mayav and only then you could destroy them. 
V'chein motzinu, that as soon as David came to the scene, Vayaches Moyov, he destroyed Moyov. Amazing! The moment David comes to the scene, he destroys Moyov. Why? Because Moyov can't exist! It's like you go over to some Echazer, you remove their lave. Okay, so now that's it. That's the end of it. By David being removed from Moyov, Moyov's heart has been removed. So what happened? Klal Yisrael are approaching Moyov. So, Oyvei, Oyoyim Venoira, Moyov is afraid, Balak is afraid that what? Klal Yisrael would extract David and Moyov would cease to exist. So says the Igra de Kala, Igra de Kala of the Menei Yisrael, so look at number 16. The, we know he brings down this idea, the vitality of any Uma is because of the Nitzah Sakdusha that lays dormant within them. Once that Nitzah Sakdusha is removed, the nation will collapse. Vayagar, the word Vayagar means to store. What he was trying to do was to keep David HaMelech latent within them for as long and historically as possible so that Moyov could exist for as long as possible. Because the moment that David is is activated from among them, the moment he's removed, they will cease to exist. Vayagar is a lashon of Agira, of Agar, of storage. And therefore, Bilam had a great Eitzah. Now, this is the uh, idea of the Panam Yafais of the Hafla. If we get the Bnei Yisrael to be Mezana with the Bnei Yismayav, think what's going to happen now. While until now there was only one spark of Kedusha in the Bnei Yismayav, if they're Mezana with the Bnei Yismayav, then they will then be injecting into Mayav many, many in Yitzhak Kedusha, and then Mayav will last until the end of time. That's why if you look in the Pasuk, the Pasuk says, L'cha i'atzcha ma'yasa amazeh la'amcha ba'achris hayamim. In other words, he's trying to get Kla Yisrael to constantly have to be extracting these, these sparks of Kedusha until the end of days. While until now it was only the spark of David that existed in Mayav, if he gets the B'nai Yisrael to be Mazana with Kla Yisrael, then Mayav will be laden, laden with sparks until the end of days. Okay. So I want to tell you a very big Chiddush. So basically, what Bilam has to come up with is, he has to figure out a way to store David HaMelech within Mayav as long as possible. So what are they trying to do? Who are they trying to hold back from Klal Yisrael? David. By the way, how many Mizbechais do they build? Each time they build seven. The Pasuk says, the David who Hashavi. The David who Hashavi. So they're trying to prevent David from coming out. The, they're trying to preserve David. Let me tell you a very interesting thing. The Shalash Regalim are connected who? The Shalash Avais. Is there a fourth Regal? Shemini Atzeres is Regal Bifnei Atzmai. Interesting. So they're really not three Regalim. They're really four Regalim. But Shemini Yatzar says, Regal Bifnei Atzmai. Well, Marv Rabbi say, if Pesach is Kenegad Avraham, and Shavuos is Kenegad Yitzchak, and Sukkot is Kenegad Yankov, who is Shemini Yatzar as Kenegad? Says the Shari Oira, one of the great Svarim of Kabbalah from Rabbi Yosef Giktilya, he says in number 26, that Shemini Yatzar is Kenegad David Hamelech. Interesting. In fact... Marv Rabbi Isai, what day of tshuva is Shemini Atzeres? From Rosh Chodesh Elul until Shemini Atzeres is how many days? 51 days. After Hoshana Rabbah, 51. Shemini Atzeres is the 51st day of tshuva. 22nd of Tishrei, and, right? And 29 of Elul. It's the 50, 51st day of tshuva. So you have a guy by the name of Light. Now, where did David come from? Mayav and Light. As long as Avraham and Light are together, Avraham feels comfortable that David is together with the Jewish people. But Avraham and Light, Avraham says to Light, 
you know, this, this is going to be a problem. If we fight and you separate from me and you go off to Sadaim, who am I going to lose? I'm going to lose David. Then it's going to be a big avoider to get David back. I don't want to fight. Why not? No! Because if I fight with you, I'm going to lose. No! Who's no? Shmini Atzeres. David Amach. I'm going to lose David. Al no tehi meriva beini uveinecha, says the Igra de Kala, number 27. I don't want to lose David. I need to hold on to David. I lose David, then you're going to go to Sodom. We're going to have to send a malach to schlep you out of Sodom. And then there are not going to be any, any ladies for you to marry. And your daughters are going to have to live with you. And then you're going to create a new nation, Moyav. And then... It's going to be a whole thing with Rus and Baya. It's a very difficult, all these different Cheshbainos and crooked pathways and byways. Let's keep it simple like, let's just stick together. I'll know to he, I don't want to lose no. So the Sefer Likutim HaMarim, Shvila Pinchas, Tavshin Ayin Bey says, that is why Balak is Marames Tebilam, Vi'ata Licha Na. Keep the Na. Na refers to Shmini Atzeres. Make sure we hold on to David. As long as we keep David with us, we will last forever. Okay, so here, fasten your seatbelts. This is Namash Oyem The question is, we're, Rashi keeps on saying that Bilam wanted to be Oikar, the Shalish Avais. Bilam wanted to be Oikar, the Shalish Vagalim. What, what's he going to do? He's going to come to Pesach and dig it up. How is he going to be Oikar, Shalish Vagalim? How is he going to be Oikar, the Shalish Avais? Marver Abaisai, the Shlah HaKadosh tells us, Excuse me, back to number 26, the uh, Sefer Shari Oira says, the reason why the Yamim Tavim are called Regalim is because, again, the, the Yamim Tavim are connected to Avais, and the Kisei HaKavayt of the Ribbana Shalaylam has to have legs. What does the Kisei HaKavayt stand on? What are the legs of the Kisei HaKavayt? The first leg is Avraham. The second leg is Yitzchak. The third leg is Yaakov. What is the fourth leg of the Kisei HaKavayt? David. David is the fourth leg of the Kisei HaKavayt. Marv Rabbi Isai, if you have a chair, which leg is the most important? The fourth leg. The fourth leg. You can't sit. A chair with three legs does not, st- does not sit. You need uh, the fourth leg holds the chair up. That is why, says the Shalak Kadosh, David is the Regal Ravi. David comes from Shevet Yehuda. What does the Pasuk say when Yehuda was born? Vata Moid Miled, that's a Lashon of Amida. Why does it say Amida by, by Yehuda? Because Yehuda is the progenitor of David, and Yehuda keeps the chair standing. Without David, the chair collapses, the chair falls down. Ah, oh, so now we understand. If you look at the word Yehuda, look at the word Yehuda. You have Yudke Vavke, you have the name of Hashem. But what holds up the name of Hashem? The Dalet. The Dalet is the fourth leg, David HaMelech. Mamela, the three the Regalim are called Regalim. Why? Because it doesn't mean feet. It means the Regalim correspond to the Avais, which holds up the Kisei HaKavod. Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov. But what holds the Kisei HaKavod up? Who holds up the Kisei HaKavod? David! Mamela, if you're going to be Oiker, David, who are you Oiker? You're Oiker, the whole chair. That's Pshat. Bilam wanted to be Oiker, the Shalish Regalim. Bilam wanted to be Oiker, the Shalish Avais. Where do we find anything? Here, you have, what's he going to do to Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov? Avram Yitzchak have lived already. What's he going to do to Shalish Regalim? The answer is, if he's able to hold on to David HaMelech forever and ever, then the Kisak will only have three legs, and it will be Nekar Legamri. That's the Pshat that Bilam wanted to be Oiker, the Shalish Regalim. By the way, the same way David HaMelech holds up the Kisei HaKavod, because he's the fourth leg, it's a very interesting thing. Shalosh Regalim Tachag Libashana. Pesach is called a Chag. Sukkot is called a Chag. Shavuos is called a Chag. Says the Shulchan Aruch, when you daven Shemana Esrei on Shemini Atzeres, don't say Shemini Atzeres HaChag Hazeh. Shemini Atzeres is not a Chag. He just says, um, he says, Bayoim Hashmini. Um, Bayoim Shmini Atzeres Hazeh. He says, don't say the word Chag. 
Why not? Why Shmi Yatzer not a Chag? Listen carefully. The Rama Mipano says, Chag means a circle. Like Chag Chuga by Chani Amagal. All the Yom Toivim, you know, you have a hub. And you have a hub in the center. And you have the spokes. And you have the perimeter of the circle. The Yom Toivim are on the perimeter of the circle. They are called Chagim. But what's the center point of Kedusha that all the Yom Toivim revolve around? Shemini Atzeres. Shemini Atzeres is not a Chag. Shemini Atzeres is actually the center of the circle. How do we explain that? Because Shemini Atzeres is Keneged David. The same way that the Shalosh, the same way that David holds up the Kisei HaKavayt, Shemini Atzeres, which is Keneged David, is the center point of all the Yom Toivim of the year. So, Rabbi Sai, this is Mamish. It was Kedai to come down to this world to hear this. I even, I told it over this week to Rabbi Pinchas Friedman, Shvile Pinchas. He said it's so good that I already said it 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, come on, you know. And, uh, and then he sent me where he wrote it. He wrote it in an article in Machana this about 30 years ago in his first piece. And then he said, but don't feel bad because then I found the Klichemna says this. This is out of this world. You ready? This is Mamish out of this world. So, Bilaam has a problem. What's Bilaam's problem? Bilaam's problem is as follows. Bilaam needs to preserve and keep David HaMelech trapped in Moyav. Now, how are you going to keep David trapped in Moyav? There's a way. If somehow you could create that nobody could ever marry someone from Moyav, then David HaMelech will remain trapped in Moyav forever. So Balak says like this, if I hire Bilaam, God's going to be so angry at Moab. You know what he's going to say? Lo yavoy Moab, yibakal Hashem. Oh, great idea. I'm going to hire Bilaam. God will get angry at us. The Kaisa will never be able to marry into Moab. And then David will be trapped forever. Yeah, but Bilaam says, you know, but the men do the hiring. So maybe God's going to say, only you can't marry the men, but you can still marry the females. So Bilaam has a brilliant plan. Bilaam tells uh, Balak, when the Jews come out to you, make sure you don't serve them water and food. Don't set up any hot dog stands. Don't sell them uh, food. Don't serve them drink. God will be so angry at you that he'll say that you're such a corrupt people, the Jewish people can never marry into you. So Balak says, no, but that's not a good idea because God will only hold the men, the men accountable for not serving the men. But the women who are supposed to be more modest, God won't hold them accountable for not serving us. So Bilaam says, no, but at least the women should have gone out to serve uh, water and drink to the women. Yeah, but Balak says, no, even that. Women are supposed to be more in the background. So God is not going to hold, God is not going to hold the women accountable for... Um, God is not going to hold the women accountable for not bringing us water and drink. So Balak says, you know, this is not a good plan because only the men are going to be us or not the women. So Bilaam says, no, no, no. Here, here's, um, so Bilaam says this is a problem. This is a problem because the women are never going to be held accountable. Let me just um, digress for a moment. I'm going to tell you an incredible thing. When the three Malachim came to Abraham... So one Malach came to tell Sarah she was going to have a child. And one Malach came to heal Abraham. And one Malach came to destroy Sodom. Okay. And one Malach came to save light. So Rashi says that's four. No, Rashi says don't worry. The Malach that came to rescue light is the same Malach that came to heal Abraham. So Chidush Arim says, well, you have a job shortage. So uh, what? It's the same Malach. So appoint one Malach to, uh, to uh, heal Abraham and another Malach to save light. Chidush Arim says an, something out of this world. Says the Chidush Arim, the Malach that went to rescue light, what's he rescuing light for? Light's, uh, light's such a good guy? The answer is we have to rescue light. Because who's a descendant of light? David! So in essence, he was rescuing David. So the Malach says to God, Rescuing David? How am I going to rescue David? We'll never be able to free David from Moyav because Loyav ay Moyavi b'kal Hashem. So Hashem says, No, only the men, not the women. So the Malach says, Why not the women? So Hashem says, Because women are modest. So the Malach says, 
I never saw a modest woman. So Hashem says, go to Sarah's tent, you'll see the modesty of women, and then you'll understand that you can rescue light, because only men are us, they're not women. So the Malach had to go to the tent of Abraham to see that women are supposed to be modest, to recognize that Loyava Yavai Hashem is only on the men, not on the women, and then he could go to, to rescue uh, light. That's why David HaMelech lifts up his eyes to Hashem. He says, Hashem, I owe you a lot of gratitude. Esa Einai El Ha'arim. By the way, who saved David's skin? Which matriarch? Sarah. Had Sarah not been a Tznua, we never would have rescued the, um, David. So David says, Esa Einai! Esa is Rashi Tevois! Aye, Sarah, Ishtecha! Where is Sarah? What's the answer? He neighbor Oyal. David HaMelech is always grateful to Sarah. Esa Einai! Esa stands for Aye, Sarah, Ishtecha! Because Sarah established the halacha, that women are modest, Mamela, we can only hold the men accountable for not serving us drink. We can't hold the females accountable for not serving us drink. So Bilam says, I've got a great plan. You know what my plan is? I'm going to have the Beno Yismayav go out in a very loose, promiscuous way. I'm going to show that our women are prutzais. Ah, the Beno Yismayav are prutzais. Then Hashem's going to say, Bilam says, the same way the men are held accountable for not bringing out drink, the women will be held accountable. What are you going to say? Women are supposed to be in the tent? What do you mean women are supposed to be in the tent? The, these women, they, they don't hang out in the tent. So I want to say that's the reason why of all the things that really was a thorn in the side of Bilam, what really bothered him more than anything else? Women are in their tent? Forget it! Then the, you're going to be able to marry the women of Mayav, and then Dara is going to be able to come out. Meaning the thing that pained Bila more than anything else was the Because if the women are Tsunuais, then they're going to remain Mutter, and it's only going to be Loyavai Mayavi Bekal Hashem, but Mayavi could enter Bekal Hashem. So what's Bilam's great Einfal? Bilam's great Einfall is, if he gets the women to be Mazana, then we could say, look, maybe in the olden days, in the times of Sarah, women didn't go out to bring drinks. But our women, you know, we, we have a different type of, uh, our Nashim have different practices, Bilam says. If you could get them to go against the tendency of the way women are supposed to be, Mamela, not only is it going to be Loyavai Mayavi Bekal Hashem, it's going to be Loyavai Mayavi Bekal Hashem. That was the Eitzah of Bilam. The brilliant Eitzah of Bilam is if he could get the Ben Ismayav to be Mezana, then David will remain trapped forever. That was the Eitzah of Bilam, and that's why Matoivo Yolach Yaakov was such a thorn in the sides of Bilam. Why do we lay in Parshas Balak right before the three weeks? Chassam Soifer writes in the Drasha is Chassam Soifer. Chassam Soifer says, if you want to look it up, it's on page Shin Bez Amid Bez going on to Shin Gimel Amid Aleph. If you look in the story of Rus, we find that Naomi told Rus you better go to him now because I know he's not going to delay this. He's going to add him kil hadavar hayom. He will settle the matter today. Why? Says Chassam Soif, Chassam Soif makes a cheshven that Rus came to Bayaz, Kaloiz k'tzir achitim k'tzir ha'asa'orim. The Targum says she came on Erev Pesach. Three months later will take you to the 16th day of Tamas. Rus knew that Shiva from Shiva Asabatamas until Tishabav was the time of the the downfall of the Malchus based David. It's a time of Chorben. There's no way Bayaz is going to want to uh, begin this relationship with you once the three weeks begin. For sure, I know for sure tonight Yedzayin Batamos will be his the, he will not delay it any further. He's not going to want after all the Minigas uh, we don't have weddings during the, the three weeks. Says the Chsam Soifer that Nami tells Rus, there is no question, he's going to settle the matter by tonight. And in fact, he did. Which means that Bayaz lived with Rus, Shiva Asabatamas. Which means, when was Oyved conceived? 
Shabbat In other words, when were the seeds of Malchus based David planted? Shiva Sabatamas. Oyved was conceived, Shiva Sabatamas. By the way, when was Mashiach born? Mashiach was born, we have a tradition, on Tishabab. So even though on the outside, the three weeks seem like a time of Chorban for the Malchus based David, but at the depth of the matter, the Tzmicha and the fruition and the sprouting of Malchus based David really begins, Shiva Sabatamas. Oyved was conceived, Shiva Sabatamas. Mashiach is born on Tishabab. Mamela, the three weeks have this dichotomy. We are now it's a time of Avelos, but in it are the seeds of the fruition of the Malchus based David. That's why we say that Tishabav is a Yamtiv. What's the Yamtiv of Tishabav? We already say in the Navi, because even though now they're days of Avelos, they already have in them latent the fruition of the Malchus based David. Therefore, the three weeks we encounter with like a duality of emotion. On the one hand, it's a time of destruction, but we also understand that it has in it the potential to, of the rebirth of Malchus based on it. That is why Parshas Balak is the parsha that we lay in immediately right before the three weeks. Because it's the battle over Malchus based David. Balak understands that David HaMelech is, is going to come from him. That's why that's what gave him the bravado to stand up to Klal Yisrael. He's trying to hold on to David. He's trying to hold on to the Malchus. He sends the message to Pesairah. This is the battle, of, this is how we encounter the three weeks. We understand we're coming to a territory where we could activate Malchus based David. And on the other hand, it's the time of the Churban of the Malchus based David. Parshas Balak really is the introduction to the three weeks, where we have the Malchus in Chorben. It's being held on to by the Kochas Atuma of Balak and Bilam, but we have the ability to try to extract it and to try to bring it to fruition. You know, we say at the end of Kiddush Levana, the Kuyam Banu, the Yivak, um, the Lashon is, the, uh, the Pasuk in Hosea, the Yivak Shu Es, Hashem Lekehem, the Es, David Malcolm. They will seek out Hashem and they will seek out David. Something a little strange about that. I mean, just say they'll seek out Hashem. Well, what are you adding by seeking out David? The answer is because as much as we try to seek out the Rebbein Shalom, the vehicle through which Rebbein Shalom is recognized in this world is through the Kisei HaKavayit. And the Kisei is only upheld through Malchus based David. So Shetaka Bizoicha, that not only the Haftarah of Parshas Balak speaks about which is Shiva Asabatamos, but we also Lane Parshas Balak, where we are approaching Mayav, we are approaching the ability to access and activate the Malchus Beisavish Takabi Zoicha, Semach David Avdacha, Mehira Satsmiach, Shkaya. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.